Hi guys, today I'm here to discuss with you a small and pretty nice topic that is NMJ or neuromuscular junction. So let's break down the words. Neuro. Let us draw a neuron terminal or an axon terminal here. Now, muscular. Here I am drawing a small portion of the muscle. In order for you to understand this chapter better, I have a few videos that you might want to refer to. Go check them out. We are now restricting our discussion only to skeletal muscles. And as you know, skeletal muscles are voluntary in nature. When they are voluntary, they require a signal from a neuron in order to contract and cause an activity. Now, this signal is passed on from the neuron to the muscle through this junction known as neuromuscular junction. So first, let's look at the basic morphology of uh, NMJ. So when we come to the axon part, we have tons of vesicles here. Now these vesicles are suspended in the axoplasm that is the cytoplasm of the axon. Now they contain really small neurotransmitters known as acetylcholine. Let me make it simple for you. These acetylcholine neurotransmitters, as the name suggests, transmit the neuronal signal from the axon or the neuron to the muscle. Apart from acetylcholine, you will also see a lot of mitochondria. Why you may ask? Mitochondria is required to produce ATP for the synthesis of this acetylcholine in the cytoplasm of the cell body of the neuron. Now when we look at the muscle, you can see the muscle has a lot of indentations like this. These are known as subneural clefts and this area is known as synaptic cleft and this region is known as synaptic gutter of the muscle. Basically synapse is wherever two neurons or a muscle and a neuron meet and this area is a synaptic cleft. The synaptic gutter is the region where the axon terminates on the muscle and subneural clefts are indentations on the muscle which increase the surface area for the neuromuscular junction or the transmission of neuronal impulse. Now I am going to be drawing a few channels here. You will understand the meaning of all these colorful stuff I have drawn here very very soon. So let us now get into the mechanism of how an electric impulse transmits from the neuron to the muscle. So when an action potential reaches the terminal of a neuron, this stimulates these channels, these are calcium channels to open up. That leads to all the calcium ions outside in the synaptic cleft to move inside. Now when these calcium ions move inside, they cause these vesicles which are stuck to the cytoskeleton of the cytoplasm of this axon to break off. That means these vesicles break off and they travel all over here near the membrane. So once they reach the membrane, they fuse with the membrane and let out all these acetylcholine neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. So these acetylcholine, this is the short form that you write, that is ACH or AC. So now these are let out by the process of exocytosis. Exocytosis is the removal of any kind of cellular substance from the cell. Similarly, all these vesicles remove or empty of their acetylcholine neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. Now these neurotransmitters, they come here to the muscle fiber and bind here on these channels known as ligand gated ion channels. So ligand gated ion channels as the name suggests lets the passage of ions from the extracellular matrix 
when stimulated by a ligand. Now a ligand can be any substance. So now this acetylcholine neurotransmitter comes here and binds with the ligand gated ion channel. So the ligand here is acetylcholine. So when it binds, this causes some kind of structural change in the membrane and that causes sodium ions to enter the muscle cell. So acetylcholine attaches to the ion channel and this causes a large amount of sodium to enter into the muscle. Now when the sodium enters the muscle, it obviously brings in a positive charge to the inside of the muscle membrane. This positive charge is also known as end plate potential. This end plate potential triggers many more sodium channels to open up and this one is known as voltage gated ion channel because here the stimulus is the change in the membrane potential from negative to positive due to the influx of sodium from here to here and that causes more and more sodium channels to open up and this causes the excitation of a muscle fiber which again leads to contraction of a muscle fiber. This is known as EC coupling which we will be learning about very soon whenever I make the video. Now to answer some of your questions, why does only sodium get in? Why don't other ions such as potassium or chloride get in too? Now to answer your question, potassium. As you know, potassium content is greater inside the cell rather than outside the cell and this is against the concentration gradient so potassium cannot move from a region of low concentration to high concentration hence it does not move through this ion channel now what about chloride so well chloride concentration is really really high outside the membrane yet it does not move into the muscle and this is because this receptor area or this ion channel area has a lot of negative charges around it which prevents chloride from interacting with the ion channel and hence it does not come in. Since all this process is done, something has to be done about this acetylcholine because if it's persistent in this area, this will cause the muscle to excite again and again and when it excites again and again, it contracts again and again, that leads to muscle fatigue or muscle getting tired. Now, to overcome this, we have another set of enzymes known as acetylcholinesterase. So, if I split the word, it's basically acetylcholine esterase. That means these destroy the acetylcholine neurotransmitters. So, as soon as their job is done, that is binding to the ligand gated ion channel, these acetylcholine neurotransmitters are destroyed by acetylcholinesterase hence preventing muscle fatigue and they do not come out from the neuronal membrane again unless there is another action potential that is passed on. Now this was the neuromuscular junction and that is how impulses pass from a neuron to a muscle. Let us now discuss a case about the same. Myasthenia gravis. You might have heard of this disease a lot. If not, let me tell you what it is. So over here, you can see that acetylcholine attaches to these receptors that are present here on the muscle membrane. But in myasthenia gravis, you have the presence of antibodies. These antibodies attack your receptors. So when these antibodies attack the acetylcholine receptors, Acetylcholine cannot bind to the receptors anymore and hence the signal cannot transmit from the neuron to the muscle anymore and if it transmits it's very weak in nature because most of the receptors have been destroyed by antibodies those are generated by our own body and hence myasthenia gravis is known as an autoimmune disorder. That means our own body causes this disorder by secreting antibodies against the receptors for acetylcholine. So when these receptors are hurt, 
the end plate potential that i talked about is too weak to initiate the voltage gated sodium channels to open up hence muscle depolarization doesn't occur muscle does not get excited and muscle does not contract the symptoms of this disease firstly start with the ocular muscles or extra ocular muscles being attacked that is the muscles around our eye further they also cause the muscles of the proximal limbs to be affected and finally in most severe forms the respiratory muscle or the diaphragm can be affected too and when diaphragm or the respiratory muscles are affected then adequate respiration cannot take place adequate inspiration cannot take place and that may also lead to death and hence this problem is very serious now how exactly do we counter this disease well when you go back to the root of the problem that is the absence of enough end plate potential and absence of enough end plate potential is due to absence of acetylcholine receptors now there are certain drugs known as neostigmine so these drugs what they do they inhibit acetylcholine esterase remember we talked about acetylcholine esterase this acetylcholine esterase destroys the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft so when this is inhibited acetylcholine concentration in the synaptic cleft increases and hence muscle activity can still be sustained with the existence of less amount of receptor now another way we can think about this is i told you it's an autoimmune disorder what if we suppress the immune system itself so immunosuppressants these are administered to the patient or a very effective cure is thymectomy so thymectomy as the name suggests thyme which is thymus ectomy means removal so removal of thymus will reduce the immune system of the body that is the production of antibodies is suppressed and hence thymectomy prevents antibody generation against the acetylcholine receptors and hence this autoimmune disorder can be easily normalized this was it for today's video you all i really really hope you liked it and i will be coming up with more stuff like this very very soon thank you so much for watching and yes big heart i just destroyed my drawing but um heart yay